Blunt Cuts is a podcast fueled by creativity, curiosity, and empowerment. We cut through the daily mess of life. This is Unfiltered Honesty. Park your passive at the door. This is Blunt Cuts. Welcome to Blunt Cuts. I'm CJ, and please welcome to the studio Quinn Via Gomez, aka Shimmer in my life, Twin Cities based creative fashionista, goddess, co host of Fresh Fruit on KFAI. And as a transgender woman of color, Quinn is making a mark on this world, and it is a beautiful one. And I'm so excited to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. I'm like nervous because you're a professional radio <laughs> personality and I play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting to be in your, yeah, be in this space with you because you really are, um, you know, one of those women that I look up to in, in our world. So it's an honor to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. Um, I'm a fan of yours, and I know that I've seen some amazing things that you've done as well, so I'm really excited to be in conversation. So fun. I mean, I think back to when the first time I met you, it was at a Raw show, and I don't even know if you remember this, but I know Jonathan, your bestie, and he introduced us, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's incredible. Like, I need to know more. Then I get to the bus stop the next morning, and you happen to be in one of my pictures, but behind me a little bit and one of the moms at the bus stop was like how do you know Quinn like I know Quinn how do you know Quinn I used to work with Quinn and I was like well I don't yet but I need to because I love you and you love her and I love her so anyway long story wow. like you have crossed in my like circles more than you know and you're very frequently on my heart and mind so it's so exciting thank to you have you here but I know you also have amazing bold perspectives on our world and that is what Blunt Cuts is all about is really bringing things to light that um, aren't always easy to talk about and questions that arise and curiosities and um, I am always asking why. That is one of my <laughs> uh, biggest strengths is I always want to know why and I want to know more. So today I want to kind of expand on a conversation I've, I've started having on inclusivity in beauty brands. So I know you, I know that you love makeup from what I can see in your social feeds, you know, because that's really where our paths cross the most. And I would love for you to kind of share your story a little bit with our audience, first of all, and then talk about how beauty products play a role in your life. Yes, absolutely. So thank you again for having me. My name is Quinn Via Gomez, aka Shimmer, and I use the pronouns of she, her female pronouns, and I'm a trans Latina, and I've been in my medical transition now for three and a half years. It'll be four next month, and I... Um, am living, um, I think, the most happiest life that I've ever lived. I think since my transition, I'm more vibrant and more excited. And I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because I think, especially as someone who lives in this community, um, a big part of my life burden is looks and dysphoria. Um, and it's really hard trying to look a certain way because in our community oftentimes there's those labels and people expect you to look a certain way so for instance um, I was assigned male at birth and I am now living my life authentically and truthfully as a woman and so um, I'm transitioning from male to female and so I still kind of have these um feelings of like, I have to look a certain way. If I don't look a certain way, then I'm not woman enough or I'm not girly enough. And so makeup has been something that I've always loved. And, you know, one thing for me that I really struggled with um, my entire life is uh, facial hair. And I've always struggled with it because for one, I'm Hispanic and we have really dark hair. So unfortunately, I'm someone uh, that grew up with a lot of facial hair and so it's been a real struggle and I just started my uh first session of laser hair removal and I oh actually my gosh congrats <laughs> yeah and I cried and I was emotionally happy because it's something that I wanted to do but I always had to 
get foundation. And it's, it's been something that I've had a really hard time of trying to cover up that facial hair. So foundation has been a struggle and it's always been a struggle trying to find the right brand, the right color, the right skin tone. And every time I feel like I find the right one, I still feel like it's not full coverage. And I, I have to have full coverage on my face um, until my laser is all done. Um, but right now, I still have to make sure that like I have the right concealer, I have the right foundation. And actually, I have to get the right shade of foundation because if I don't, then it might look too yellow or it might like too a little bit too like overly white. Um, and then also like there, it leaves the mark on my, on my chin. And so, and then it falls on your shirt. So that's been the biggest burden in my life so far is the whole facial hair. And so um, I actually have found some really good brands, which I'm excited to talk about. Oh yeah, please, um, please, please share. Cause yes, I yes. know that you are not alone in this. For sure. <laughs> Um, I actually really, um, I love the brand Tarte. So I found um, Tarte, um, I heard about it a couple of years ago, and I know that they have something called Shape Stick. And I was looking on YouTube one day, and I'm like, okay. And I'm very, like, the type of person, like, I see something like, oh, oh, this might work. And I get excited, and I'm like, I want I want to try that. I want to try that. And then I always go buy it and then I'm like, oh, it's not really what I expected. But then I was, I was, um, I do a lot of um, reading and I, I listen to a lot of stories of, of other trans women um, on YouTube. And so I was um, watching this one um, really awesome, amazing uh, young lady who was, uh, who was transitioning and she said she suffered from the same thing like me with having that facial hair and that five o'clock shadow and everybody would sit there and be like question her gender and so I'm like oh my god and it literally I, I feel like she popped in my head and so like literally two days later I went to the Mall of America and I'm like okay well it's at Ultra Ulta. So I went into Ulta and I was like, okay, I know exactly what I came to buy. And I was like, do you all sell um, Tarte Shape Stick? And they're like, yes. And so I went over there and literally I found the perfect, I found the perfect, perfect shade for my skin. And when I, when I've worn it, it actually has given me full coverage. And I actually feel so blessed to use it because like, I'm like, oh, wow, like it covers everything. But then I also am loving now um, um, NYX. I found NYX the other day and I'm really loving their brand. And that brand that I have to use for my skin tone is Medium Olive. Um, they had another brand. It was like, um, it was like, it was called um, Brown Almond. It was like a light, sort of like a, sort of like a really sort of olivey color, but they discontinued that one. And I was like, no. That's the worst. <laughs> yes. And I, I hate that. So now I'm using medium olive in NYX, but then also I have to put um, pressed powder over it because if you just put on the foundation and you put on the concealer, it's going to run all over your face. So I have to use um, the pressed powder to make it sit. And actually, believe it or not, I'm very leery about store brand makeup because I feel like a lot of the makeup lines that you buy, like in your local um, Target. Yeah, or your I know. Local- like you work at a big box. So I wanted to be yes. perspective on that. I'm like, but can you find what you need in a big box? Like, um, To an extent, yes. But to an extent, no. Um, but I actually love um, Maybelline. Maybelline has really awesome pressed powder. And so I usually um, use that to cover up over, I put that on over the um, tart and it works great. So I do love Maybelline's pressed powder. Well, thank you for sharing some of your favorites and a little bit of your story with that. Yes. We're going to take a quick break. Welcome back to Blunt Cuts. Here's the rest of the show. 
I have heard you talk a little bit on this before. I can't even remember where the interview was that I heard, but it was several years ago and you were talking about how like you feel like there is more pressure as a trans woman to, you can't just like, I'm not wearing any makeup right now. Like I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, like I can just leave and not wear any makeup and not think about it. But for you, that's a very different world. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you. Or a Um, lot of it. (laughs) Yes. Because I want that for you. I want you to just like roll out of bed and roll out of bed to just go, you know, and I, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm, I love this conversation and I'm really glad because I feel like this is a place that I can speak freely and openly about my feelings because I still have a lot of people that I know personally and, you know, professionally that have those um, expectations of me. And so I am like, I love Laverne Cox, Janet Mock. I love all of them. I think they're all really awesome and they're all beautiful and and, and amazing in what they do. But here's what I will tell you about that. And no disrespect to what they do because I love that they're really powerful um, trans women of color out there in the public eye doing great things. But at the end of the day, Laverne and Janet are, 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 are in the public eye and they have careers where they can afford to have a makeup artist. They can afford to have a team of people that give them the the best hair, that make their makeup look flawless and camera ready. And when they're on the cover of um, uh, Vogue or they're on the cover of Cosmopolitan, they look glamorous. And so when I see that, especially as a trans woman, that's what I say, I want to look like that. But then here in the real world, I'm not in that profession yet, like Laverne or Janet. And full you know, glam squad arriving at 6 a.m. <laughs> yes. And you know, it's it's real. Like fin- financial burdens come up, bills come up. And so for me, I, you know, have to roll out of bed and I don't like you just said, I don't have that hairstylist right then and there. I don't have that glam squad. And so some days I'm like, oh my God, I I don't have enough foundation or oh my god my concealer's out or you know I don't have the right pressed powder and so I feel like I have to work with what I have but there's days that I've gone to work and I look in the mirror and I'm like okay well I feel this way and I look really pretty but then all of a sudden when someone sees me they're like oh I can see your I can see like there's stubble on your face and I'm like oh my god so there comes that fear so I feel like where I am in my life today that even though I'm not in the public eye like both Laverne and Janet and Jazz and Caitlin and um, Carmen Carrera and all of them I have to basically you know glamify myself the best way that I know how and unfortunately I don't have like that team to make me look flawless and stunning and there's those really um really, really hard, like deep feelings of dysphoria that come into play. And, you know, oftentimes I think that expectation of like, okay, because I'm not wearing makeup or because I don't have the best cat eye or because maybe I don't have the best eyeshadow today, um, it's not good enough. So I think that there, there is an expectation. And I'm also really glad that we're having this conversation, Christina, because even though that I'm not in Hollywood um, or anything like that, but I am, I am in the public eye in the Twin Cities in the sense that even though I do a lot of panels and public speakings and media, things like that, there are still people that are even in my community that still have this expectation of that shimmer and shimmer has to have this wow factor to her. So when I'm sitting on that panel or I'm, you know, moderating a panel or I am going to host an event, there still has to be that look about me because there's people that come to these events and they're like, Oh, well, who's this shimmer that everyone talks about. And if I don't look a certain way, then people are going to say, oh, well, that's not really the shimmer that I've heard about. So 
there becomes that that fear and that perception because it's still real. I still go through it every single day. Yeah, that of, is, I mean, beyond heavy. That is beyond heavy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, this mm-hmm. idea of being yourself and entering the world of, of yourself and this whole idea of woman power and we're here and we're we're strong and we, we can just be ourselves and we're going to roll out. Well, not every woman can feel that way rolling out because they right. don't either you don't yourself feel that way if you don't have full glam on or you have this perception from the outside of people saying oh that's that's not that's not my expectation of you but I mean I say fuck them but that's just me (laughs) no I mean you know that that's me but I you know I I don't I, I don't know what it's like to be in that seat and for you to feel your best self um you know take takes a lot so thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah, of course. Of course. I um want to talk about products and like the products that we we purchase. And you know, I think you talked a little bit about brands that you found some great, great tips, but like what are the expectations of companies that you buy from? I mean, I've started thinking about this um more holistically from a like if I'm gonna buy a gift for someone, I want it to be from a small business or a maker or a woman that I know their story or can learn their story. Like I and you know, I'm really big in supporting our women's community and where and how I spend my dollar is part of that. And I feel when it comes to beauty products, um, you know, safety is important and that's something that I had no idea that beauty products are unregulated in the US. Like, oh great, that's awesome. One more thing that I have to like research because I'm a research Google is my friend so I research a lot of things but yeah like safety as well as like what is their perspective on beauty and gender and I really appreciate brands that are willing to throw away like this iconic history that they've had since the 50s that it had to just be women I mean my son loves to play in my makeup and I've never said anything different about it I mean I don't whatever play go ahead because I clearly am bad at it maybe you'll learn how to be a great makeup artist like you know <laughs> <laughs> like glam teams because I, I could use one good play with it go nuts son but like what is this perspective and like how do you feel about brands and their what they're putting out into the world about how they feel about specific you know gender didn't being more gender neutral in in what they put out yeah um so I love some brands that I think are really big like I've always grown up I've always loved Mac um I think Mac is something that I've always loved I think it's because I love the colors and I love the fun like collections that they have um I also love you know um Tart again that's another one of my favorites but I really love supporting like local, uh, you know, um, women as well that can come up with their own makeup. I also do um, like some, like some brands in, in like Walmart or Target, but see here, here's like what I'll say about a lot of these big box stores with cosmetic lines. You know, I, I, I really like to support like women of color and I, I really want to make sure that like women of color that really understand makeup and understand skin tones are being represented fully and authentically and are being paid for their work. So it really kind of annoys me when I walk into a store and there's one small little section of like a makeup line for women of color. Like for instance, I think there was like Black Opal or there was like a Milani and that's it. That's all you can find. And then everything else is like CoverGirl, Maybelline, Elme. And so, and then when I look at like a lot of the photos of like the models or like the high profile public figures, right? You have like uh, Kate Hudson or, you know, you have like um, Britney Spears, or you have like Fergie, and I'm like, okay, and so I don't see a lot of that. Like, I don't see a lot of like women that I love, like, look up to, like J Lo, uh, you know, doesn't have her own, you know, makeup collection, but you know, J Lo has modeled for, I believe she was with CoverGirl, um, a couple of years ago, and I'm like, well, that's nice, but she's just the face of that brand yeah or you tell me how many shades you blended to get me there like could you share share that with me because no I don't believe it (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. and you know so I, I I don't I have a problem with that because again 
I always feel like when I walk into a store too, like CoverGirl and Maybelline, they say, well, here is what is good for like a dark skin tone, but then here's good for like a light skin tone. And I'm like, well, okay. And I'm like, but do they really truly authentically sit down with these women that are from these communities and actually, you know, come up with, with, with the right shades of, you know, makeup for them. Because yeah. And I that's what I want. Like, I want to hear that. Like if they are like, tell me that story. Like that's the story I want to buy. Like that's how I want to buy. So I, I just want more. I expect more, I guess, for my, these brands that are taking our dollar. I just expect more out of them. And I want to do more research. So that's where I am on this topic. I mean, I don't have the answers by any means. I'm fairly horrible at doing my own makeup, but uh, you know, <laughs> I love beauty products. I do. I'm more into the, like the treatments and the oils and the, like all the masks all day long. Like I love that sort of stuff. Like I love that feeling of like just ultra clean skin. Um, that's what, that's my, that's my passion when it comes to this space, but I've also grown up in fashion. So since I was a child, I had been on the other side. So I always had like people doing my makeup if I had to look good for a photo shoot or an event or something. So now I'm kind of like, well, geez, I'm SOL. Like I got to figure this out. So minimal, that's what I do. (laughs) The bare minimum. (laughs) Right. You know, I, I try really hard not to buy a lot of like store-bought makeup because I just have a problem with like the color and the tone and you know but of course again you know bills are real and like now we're living in a time where people have kind of been furloughed and displaced from jobs and so when we're used to buying like our favorite like $55 mascara right or we we buy our $70 you know uh, foundation we really can and so a lot of us kind of have to now use these big big box retailers and have to buy that makeup that we're not used to using. And so that kind of really, I think, messes up our mind. Um, and I'm really glad that you also talked a lot about like uh, makeup and, and like the label, like the expectation for so many years realistically has been like, okay, makeup is only for women or it's only for feminine identities. And that's not right because there are a lot of, you know, men or masculine identities that like makeup. And yeah, I, I mean, I grew up with a lot in fashion, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, so to me, like I haven't necessarily seen, uh, you know, it's a, there's a lot of men that like wearing makeup. So. Right. And I mean, you, some of our, some of our most famous iconic, like actors like Will Smith and, you know, Brad Pitt and Johnny Depp, you know, when they're on camera, they have the most amazing flawless skin and that's all because of makeup right it's a part of them looking flawless and amazing on the big screen and we're like oh ah, ah, oh you know ooh, will smith is sexy but i mean i just i get so tired of everybody saying oh well if he wears makeup then i'll automatically there's that assumption that he is gay or you know he is in that community and that's not really true because Makeup really, I I feel like makeup is just a way to express yourself and to have fun. It's another art form. It really is. Like, you know, you see all these. And I think like the young kids are, they've got it straight. Like these amazing YouTubers coming out, just like doing full glam and sharing that to the world. I I mean, I really think that the kids have got this figured out that they're like, what? (laughs) They don't have to be a girl or I don't, you know, like my, my son is eight and definitely has not like really you know said anything to us about having and he knows we're a very like open gender house and like he just loves makeup because it's like paint you know so let the kid paint on faces and his own or whatever you know I don't know I guess I've just never really I don't have an issue with it so that's how my kids are going to be raised but (laughs) I've never really ever saw the problem with it and so I'm just kind of like makeup is makeup so what's the big deal and why are we having a problem and it's just really weird like how everyone just has these assumptions of like well you have to be a certain way to wear makeup and that's not really true so but I've never seen an actual line made by 
someone in my community, you know, and I would love to see more of that. I would love to see more trans identity, trans identified or gender non-conforming identities come out with a makeup line. Although I will say um, Nikita Dragon, who is one of my favorite, favorite, uh, you know, inspirations. She's also a trans woman of color. Um, she just released like her big um, palette of like eyeshadows and I got to oh, give it awesome. a from Morph. Unfortunately, Morph is like one of those stores that, you know, I think is very um, commercialized and is like in a big box retailer and it's only a specific place. And again, there are people in our community that cannot afford that makeup. So I mean, when you sign these big contracts, that's what happens. But um, I, I, I really also love supporting people that are in my community. And so I would love to see more representation with trans and, and gender non-conforming and non-binary um, artists. I would love to see that. And there's just not, maybe I can be one of the first. Guys. Yes. I, I was like, hey, my own you line. <laughs> do that. And you have my support 100%. So, well. Thank you. I think that's the plan. We figured it out, team. We figured it out. Well, I am so thankful yes. for you and for your time. And I just want to thank you for hanging out with us. Um, but where can people find you? Yes. So you can find me on Facebook at Quinvia Gomez. That's Q-U-I-N-N-V-I-L-L-A-G-O-M-E-Z. You can find me on Instagram at ShimmerGlitz33. And you can also check me out every first and second Thursday on KFAI Radio. That's 90.3 FM in the Twin Cities. The first Thursday, I just bring on local amazing trans artists. And then every second Thursday, I co-host alongside Roxanne Anderson on Fresh Fruit Rare Productions. And Rox uses the pronouns of they, them, theirs. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And let's continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find us at Blunt Cuts Podcast. Blunt Cuts is a production of Matriarch Digital Media. Executive producer Twilight Dang. Edited by Beth K. Gibbs. Production assistant Mia Register. You can find more great podcasts from Matriarch Digital Media at matriarchdm.com.